Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome to my channel. I am Lily, I am an education major. Today I'm going to be talking about something I'm very passionate about and actually Mr. Rogers was also very passionate about at his time of living. And that is arts integration. Um, I go to a school that is like very experiential and hands-on based with their learning. So all of our education classes have to do with arts integration. And if you don't know what arts integration is, it's basically a style of teaching where you use art to inform your students about a lesson and they engage in like a creative process to um, show their understanding. So I really like arts integration and there's actually a lot of books that I have or I've learned about that use arts integration. So I'm gonna go through some of the ones that I like or that I've actually used in classes and for lessons and things. The first one I'm going to talk about is Sky Color by Peter H. Reynolds. First of all, anything by Peter H. Reynolds is fantastic for arts integration. Um, I used this for two of my lesson plans last year. And it is about a girl, what's her name? I don't remember. I think it's Marisol, actually. Yes, Marisol. And she loves art. And one day she goes to art class and her teacher says they have to make a mural. And she is excited. And then she's the one that's painting the sky, but there's no blue paint. And she is like, what am I going to do? Like, there's no blue paint. I can't paint the sky without blue paint. And she then discovers that the sky is many different colors and it teaches kids that um, like to be creative and to think outside of the box. It also teaches them that you do not need to make art all like the same color. It does not have to look like the natural world all the time. So this is a really good one for um, arts integration and I really recommend this book it is so fantastic and i love it a lot i have two more peter h reynolds books i want to talk about the dot and ish so the dot is about um what's her name hold on vashti the dot is about this girl named vashti and she gets very frustrated one day in art class so she doesn't know what to draw so she just puts a dot on a piece of paper and her art teacher really loves that and she actually frames it and then Vashti is inspired to create more dots and more art with dots and it just shows you that something so simple can turn into something really great and significant and then she teaches um she actually ends up teaching a boy that he can do art art is for everyone and you don't have to be super creative to make a good piece of art. And then Ish is about this boy. I think his name's Ramon or Raymond, Raymond. And he likes drawing, but he doesn't think he's very good at it. So he's like, oh, it looks vase, vase-ish. And he can never draw anything perfectly. So he wants to give up drawing and then his sister takes up all his crumpled papers and puts them on her bedroom wall and that inspires him to draw more ish things and i just love these books so much they teach such good lessons and they're really amazing stories and i really recommend checking out peter h reynolds the next books are ones i haven't done lessons on but i would love to do some lessons incorporating the day the crayons quit and the day the crayons came home and these are by drew dewalt and basically the crayons are going on like a strike and they write their owner letters about why they're not happy with what the owner is doing and it's a really funny book but it also teaches kids to be kind to their crayons which is really good because if you're a teacher you understand that like kids are very reckless when it comes to treating things nicely sometimes. So this is a good book. And then there's The Day the Crayons Came Home and they write letters saying um, about like their adventures 
and how when they come home they hope they are treated better and it's really good and I love both of these books they're super duper cute and I highly recommend checking these out the next one is by my favorite children's author Mo Willems this is one of his only books that I know of that isn't like pigeon or elephant and piggy and it's called because and it's actually loosely based on a true story and it starts with um Franz Schubert being inspired by Beethoven so every sentence in this book starts with the word because and it's like because Beethoven wrote music of a man named Franz Schubert was inspired and because Franz Schubert had a concert this little girl was inspired and she actually became a musician named Hilary Purrington and it's just really cool it is like her life story of like how she became a musician and I love this book and I think having the kids write um, a cause and effect sentence with this book would be really cool and then they could draw a picture of that that would be super duper cool i think like the rainbow fish this is about if you don't know what the rainbow fish is about it's about this fish who is as you can see very sparkly and everyone admires his sparkly scales and they all want one and he's very selfish about it he says those are mine you can't have them and then he doesn't have any friends because he's so selfish and one day he meets up with this, I think it's an octopus. And the octopus is like, maybe you should give one of your scales to each of your friends. And by the end of the book, he's happy because he has more friends and he only has one scale, but he's just like, now he is like everyone else. They all have one sparkly scale and he is very happy with it. And you could have kids make their own rainbow fish to go along with this story. I think that'd be such a cute idea. I've actually done that and it's really, really fun. And I loved teaching that book. The next three are all board books. So they're for relatively small children, but the first one is one of my favorites from when I was a child it is A Color of His Own by Leo Leone. And it talks about, it teaches kids about their colors. And then it talks about how chameleons change colors so they don't have one solid co color and the chameleon gets sad because he wants his own color and then he meets another chameleon and they live happily being like changing and he discovers that somebody else is finally like him and it makes him happy and a really fun activity for this would be color blending seeing how different colors change as you add more to them because that's like what a chameleon does or you could have them like draw a picture of an animal but then have them kind of camouflage it with the rest of the picture and then they could see if their friends can find the animal they drew i think that would be a really fun idea um i've never really done a lesson with that i've never incorporated it these next two are ones i've actually incorporated into some lessons for class so this first one is Goodnight Broadway, and it's literally it tells you all about the process of how a Broadway show goes on, but it is like in very simple terms so children can understand. And I actually did a whole museum exhibit based around Broadway and diversity in Broadway with this book. So um, I picked four shows kids would probably recognize the characters from. I did The Lion King, Aladdin, Frozen, and Wicked. And I kind of explained how those shows promote diversity and stuff like that. And it was a really fun time and I loved it. And they really liked this book as well. And then the last book I have is My Many Colored Days. And this is actually a Dr. Seuss book. I didn't even, I would not have thought this was a Dr. Seuss book because it is so different from all his other books. But it like shows different animals and their colors. And I like to have kids tell me which color they like the most and then base an entire picture around that color and they can choose whatever animal they want to represent that color and a feeling because it talks about feelings colors and animals in this book and i think this is such an important book for children 
and I want them to know that it's normal to have feelings and to um, coordinate colors with feelings. So that is all the books I have to show you and then I wanted to show you a couple of projects I did in my class last year. So we read Elmer the Elephant and we made our own Elmer. So this is what I did. I did like these ribbon markers and put a bunch of different colors all over my elephant. This went with the elephant actually. It's like I'm one of a kind. Um, and you had to write I'm one of a kind because statements. Then probably my favorite was when we read the book I'm not just a scribble and then we did our own scribble and had to put it with a feeling which was just really really fun and then our first day of that class we did um where we had to describe ourselves with the letter of an animal and then we had to make an animal out of shape so I did I'm as motivated as a monkey reaching for a banana and then this um actually went with the dot we had to make one single shape and then continue that shape on until we reach the edge of the paper. And I really liked this assignment as well. So that is all of the things I wanted to talk about with um, arts integration. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned because I start school in three days and I will probably have a first day of school vlog and some other fun first week of school things. So yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. Stay beautiful. Bye.